So let's show you how to connect to a local database and deploy it with your mobile application. New multi-device application with Delphi. There's really only being like two lines of code here. So I'm going to go over here to the Data Explorer and let's use SQLite and the Customers Table. So we have a connection and a Customers Table here and I'm going to bind this visually. I want you to notice right here the Customers Table is empty but when I put down, uh, actually when I activate it, you'll see we have all the fields there now. So I'm going to put down a uh, list view. I'll on that client and then we will connect this up here and we'll put the company name in the text there. So now we see, we can hide this, NCR beautiful application and we can run this on Windows set to Win32 and we see it runs uh, no code written so now if we want to deploy this there's a couple things we have to do first of all if we come here and look at our connection component the connection is set to use this uh, definition name and a local database file so I'm going to change this right now first thing I'm going to do is change the driver ID to SQLite now you notice remove the definition name and database file. So let's come out here and browse out here and find the database file that I want. And we can hit test and make sure it's connected to it successfully. It has. So this is using a database file in the documents folder. And the reason that's important is because, um, let's go ahead and make this connected on the table again. I'm going to put some code in here on the customers or see on the connection before connect so in here I need to tell it where this database file is going to be at on the mobile device because c colon backslash whatever documents doesn't make sense on an iPhone first thing I'm going to do is say uses system dot iotils and then here I'm just going to say like connection dot params dot values and we're going to set the database value equal to tpath dot combine and we're going to give it the path for the documents folder which is tpath get documents path and then the name of our database file, which is fddemo.sdb. Okay, so this is going to update that path to the correct location. So let's go ahead and run this again real quick. And it should still work just fine on Windows because we're pointing to the file already in our documents folder. Okay, so let's just go to the documents folder and open that file up. But now we have to actually deploy the database file with our application. So to do that, we come here, project deployment, and we'll go down here for, oh, let's do iOS 64 bit. And I'm gonna add a file here. So I just come in here and I find my FD demo, hit open, and it's added it. Now I need to come in here and set the remote path. This is the path where it's gonna go be deployed to. And it's startup slash documents, and I'm going to set it for both debug and release to startup slash documents. And it keeps previous ones you've used in here, which makes it much more convenient than having to retype it each time. But if it's not there for you, which it won't be the first time, startup with a capital S, capital U, slash documents with a capital D. And now I can deploy this to my iPad mini. So it automatically deploys it on the iPad mini, launches the app, and here is all of our data that we can scroll through. So now to deploy it on Android, pretty much the exact same step. We just come here to Android configuration, we add the file, which is the FD demo, and we change the path here to slash, or dot slash assets, slash internal all lowercase 
There you go. And we're ready to go to Android. And here it is running on my Nexus 5. Again, all the data deployed to the mobile device. So it's very easy to connect to a local database file, deploy the database file to your mobile application and create a data-driven application. Sometimes you wanna access data that's not stored locally on your device. So I'm gonna show you really quickly how to do that with uh, RAD server, which includes EMS. First thing I'm gonna do is gonna create a server module. So I'm gonna come in here, new, other, under Delphi projects, I'm gonna choose EMS package. And we're gonna create a package with a resource. And our resource is gonna be called customer. And we're just gonna do get right now. The doc wiki covers this in a lot more detail, but it's just gonna make it really simple here, just so we can show you how to get some data. So I'm gonna go over my data explorer. And I'm going to go to Interbase Customer and just drag this over here onto my data module. And you'll see I have a connection and a customer table. So that's everything I need to connect to that um, customer table and pull the data down. Now I need to add a schema adapter. What the schema adapter will do is it will adapt this table into a format that I want, and the format I want to use because we're using REST is JSON. So this is the uh, resources to convert that to JSON. This will do the adapting, and all I have to do is go to my customer table and tell it to use that schema adapter. Right there. Now we write a little code. So we're going on here, and we're just going to, I'll just replace that there. We're gonna need a variable to store this in, mem t ori stream. And we're going to say mem equals t. And this is gonna be a except mem dot free. And then we're gonna raise that back up again. So we only want to free that on exception. And I'll show you why, because we're gonna tell the uh, server that it owns this data, mo this uh, memory stream. So now we're gonna to go to our customer table. And we're gonna say open and no SQL. We're just gonna tell it to use a SQL that's in it, which is gonna just gonna select all the records. And then we're gonna use our schema adapter and we're gonna tell it to save to the stream. We're gonna save it to that memory stream we just created. And we're gonna tell it the format, which is TFD storage format JSON. If you do not add the JSON link, this will give you an error message here. And now we're gonna take a um, response body set stream and we're gonna pass in that memory stream. So open the table, put it in the memory stream, take the memory stream, and we're gonna return it back and we're gonna say it's, it's JSON. And then this last one here is owns value. And so when I say true, that means that it will free this memory stream for me automatically so I don't have to keep track of it. Okay, so we've created the server side portion of this that's going to stream that table to the client. So let's go ahead and run this real quick. And I've already gone through the steps of setting up my EMS server, which is covered in depth in the doc wiki. And let's open the browser here. And it says, okay, here's the version, that's good. So let's look at customer. And there we go, there's the JSON of all my customers coming back. Okay, that's great. Now let's build a client for it really quick. So we're gonna say add new project and we wanna go to a multi-device application. Now in my project here, I'm going to add a data module. So go file or add new other Delphi files data module. And in the data module here, I want to put down a 
uh, FD meme table. And this is what's going to hold the data that's going to come down from the server. And then we need a table adapter. And a schema adapter. And it's really important that we put down a weight cursor as well. And that's what's required by FireDAC in order to have a weight cursor displayed to the user. Uh, if you don't do that, you'll get an error message saying, hey, put down the weight cursor. So now that's how you'll know. So on our table adapter, we want to tell it that we're using the customer table. That was the name of the table right here, customer table. And we need to connect it to that schema adapter. Okay, so now we've got our data module set up. So let's go back to our main form here. And on here, we're going to use our EMS components. So we'll see EMS provider and an EMS uh, FireDAC client. Okay. And on our provider, we're going to point it to um, our IP address, which is 10, 10 10.0.1.18 and our port, which is 8080. That's the default. And then for the client, we're going to point it to that provider we just put on there and then point it to the schema adapter. But before we can do that, we have to say use unit and use the unit that has our data module. And now we can point the client to the schema adapter. And now we tell it what resource we want to use. And so the resource we're going to use is called customer. So this is the name of the resource. Remember when we looked at our, oh, we don't have it open still. The In the browser, the URL segment was called re customer. That's the name of the resource we're publishing from on the middle tier on the RAD server. Okay, so now we're going to put down a, uh, let's do a grid just for simplicity's sake. And we're going to bind this grid visually. And we'll just bind it to the mem table. There we go. And we're going to put down a button on here to turn this on. Okay, so the button is going to, let's go ahead and just line this client. And the button, okay, terrible UI, don't do this. But for simplicity's sake, this will work. And the button, we're going to say EMS fire.client get data. So this is going to go get the data from the REST server, the RAD server in the middle that's going to have the data in it. It's going to pull the data from the interbase database, put it into JSON, stream it down to the client, and display it to the user. So let's run this. And if I did everything correctly, it will work. So I tap the button. And nothing happened. Oh, I didn't set the adapter. Right there. I have to set the adapter on the FDMM table. Now this will work. Boom, yeah, look at that. We've got data. Okay, so that's cool on my desktop. What about on a mobile device? So let's go ahead and deploy this on my iPad mini. And there it is deployed to my iPad. Again, pardon the terrible UI, but I tap that button and look at that. There's data delivered remotely from the Interbase database through RAD server using EMS as a JSON package down to my client application. Uh, works the same on Android, iOS, Windows, OS 10, etc.